friends. Hope you guys are well. Happy day after Halloween. If that's a holiday, I don't know what it's called. I meant to eat this off stream, but I decided not to, I guess. <laughs> we'll just eat my my dinner while we wait for everyone to come in. Put our feet up on the foot dress. And uh Relax. Relax till we all get here. Um, I don't think I'll be able to open Stream Manager on here, so I'll have to read chat from there. So. Typing capitals. No, I'm just kidding. I'll move it closer. <laughs> Type aloud. <clears throat> it's fine. It's just the paper bag. I did not just sit on my lunch. It's I already had it. Okay, we're gonna do that, eh? Yeah, that'll work. I wish you guys could see the pumpkins. Should we put the pumpkins in the shot? Are they in the shot, actually? Do you see those little cuties? No, you can. That's fine. You guys can see my back porch. Um, so today we're gonna read... Hello, friend! We're gonna read Seven Minutes of Magic. I got this Qigong book. It says four ninety nine on here. The whole thing shipped to my house. I got three books for eleven dollars, and then like a discount on top of that, so it was like ten dollars for three books delivered right to my house. So good. Discover books, best deals ever. Reused books. Um, so sometimes you know they're underlined and fun things and highlighted and stuff. But anyway, we're eating a gyro for dinner tonight if you're interested. If you don't know what a gyro is, it is pita bread wrapped up, a lamb and beef combo that they like slice off a big circular piece of meat that I'm sure has a name that I'm forgetting right now. But it's delicious. Highly recommend the Pita House in Grand Rapids. Hi friends, welcome in. We're just chilling outside. It's 66 degrees out. It's sunny, obviously. I can barely open my eyes. It's beautiful out here. <laughs> I might have to get my sunglasses on. I didn't realize uh, I'd be staring into the sun like this. It's probably great for lighting, but it's terrible for me reading chat. Okay. Traditionally, a gyro has tzatziki sauce, and I put hummus on mine. Um, it'll have like lettuce, tomatoes, onions. I put lettuce, banana peppers, green peppers, and they usually have feta, some kind of seasoning, and so I put the feta and the seasoning on it. Hello! Hummus is good. Hummus on everything. Extra protein, please. In the form of smashed chickpeas and tahini. Buttsmiths on everything. Thanks, Buttsbot. We appreciate your contribution to the conversation. Buttsbot just making up his own words. Um, shoot, I was just going to get something and now I'm completely forgetting what it was. Oh, my sunglasses, so I can see. One moment. Oh my god, I probably look ridiculous just sitting in a lawn chair chatting to my phone on a on a tripod. I was gonna say on a stick, but it's not a stick. Look at these great sunglasses that Anunnaki Starseed made me. So awesome. And this great Euro that I'm about to eat. Buttsmith sounds like a cool Christmas alternative. That's what I was thinking when I read it too. <gasps> Hoaxers! Welcome in! Hello! These sunglasses were made by Anunnaki. They're a little big for my face, but my face is small, so everything is. I have to buy like kid sized glasses. It's totally fine. Okay, I'm eating a gyro. I was waiting for people to get in. I know people are in, but I'm still hungry. Hi! <laughs> 
Hi, Defi- can I call you Defiled, or do you want to be called Entrails? <laughs> Your choice. Mm. Best Euro Rubber. Yum. Every year I get from there is the best year ever, though, to be fair. That was like a quarter of a green pepper in there. <laughs> it's true, if there's a stream where I'm not eating something at some point, is it even me streaming? It's probably not. It's probably an alien that doesn't eat that took over my body. Because some people say they're always hungry. But, like, the things that I say are so true. Like, to a point where I'm like, no, like, people don't understand. Like, if you start hanging out with me, you realize I'm just, like, always eating something. Like, always. <gasps> Melinda Merlin! Welcome in! Could you imagine if I was like, <laughs> I know, right? But like, it's so, it was so funny to me that I had to say it out loud. If it made one person laugh, then it's a good day. Um, yeah, that's, <laughs> Melinda, I just can't even handle that. I'm so glad to see you. Shout outs to Melinda Merlin. Um, Hoaxers, do you stream? Do you? And I just don't know it. Look at the sun is so bright. Oh, Gengar escaped! I'm so sorry for shouting that to all my neighbors. Um, no! A Gengar, where was I? How did I miss that? I would have gone inside my house to go catch that with my other phone. Dang. Dang, no you don't. Okay, well, thanks for being here and supporting. We appreciate it. We, me and Alice in Wonderland. This is who I'm referring to. I know. I know she appreciates you. This is... This is gonna be a good hero. I'll just say that instead of what I was gonna say, which is gonna get clipped. So, this is delicious. Well, no, they literally are. They literally are. They're like, what is this nerd doing yelling about Pokemon in her yard, sitting in a lawn chair, eating a Euro, yelling about Pokemon to her phone? Dude, I would chase down that Gengar if this was IRL. My son, that's my son's favorite Pokemon, Gengar and Pikachu, obviously. So... I have to tell you this story. I've been meaning to tell Ben this story. So, Benetron, if you're watching this later, this story is for you. So, my son and I one day were driving around shopping. We got all the fall decorations one day. And um, I bought, like, a whole bunch of gnomes that are inside my house right now. They're so cute. Little stuffed gnomes. You guys, if you've seen my other streams, you've seen the gnomies. Um, oh my god. So we're driving around shopping one day, and I'm like, Elon, you want to stop at the bird store? For whatever reason, just like on one of the main streets in Grand Rapids, there's this like, Casa de Parrot, Casa de, I always want to say Casa de la Parrot, but I heard that's wrong, but I don't, I don't know, House of the Parrot, anyway, however you say that in Spanish, that's what it is. So, um, no. Her bag is just gonna bump up against my car. It's okay. I'll go get it. Gengar is my fave, but apparently, butts. Oh no, I'm only reading the butts about one. But apparently, he's everyone's fave. Cool. Yeah, Elon loves him, my son. Oh, thank you. Oh my gosh, is Neo in here? Oh, Neo with the shout outs. Thanks, Neo. You're awesome. Sorry, I'm staring into the sun. Um, so I have to do this to read chat. 
because my other phone doesn't work out here, so we're very low tech here. Low tech, aka no tech. Um, so I was just telling this story about how, um, <laughs> you guys are great. You're the best. Thanks for being such a great mod, Neil. Appreciate you. So, my son and I were shopping one day and we decided to stop at this birdhouse where they have all these beautiful parrots and like different exotic birds for sale and there's it's so cool it's such a great store and so we stop in there we hang out for a while we had a great time darkness over sun no way sun over everything including the earth to warm it and keep us alive thank you sun i appreciate you um so <laughs> so we're hanging out there we uh obviously didn't get a bird or anything so we're just looking we spent our time probably an hour there just hanging out and then when we were going to leave there was this cool like you know gumball machine with pokemon pokeballs in it and elon loves pokemon and so do i and so i'm like he's like pokemon and i'm like yeah dude let's get one he's like please i'm like oh absolutely 50 cents totally worth a pokeball like i pay for i pay so much more for pokeballs on the pokemon community game son you don't even know <laughs> so anyway um so we get this pokeball and he, i was like what one do you think it is right because that's what you gotta you know that's what you do i guess i don't know if i actually said that or if he was just like pikachu like he wanted it so bad to be pikachu i was like what did we get what did we catch he goes pikachu pikachu and we open it up and what do you think it was <gasps> dead king oh my god welcome in dude it was a fucking clefairy <laughs> it's clefairy no like he literally cried when it was clefairy he fucking started crying i was like this is the meme like the real life this is actually happening right now he was so he's still so mad it's still sitting in the cup holder in his car seat he won't take it out of the car he's so mad about it oh my god i was like i have to tell ben about this it was so funny i'm sorry i would cry too yeah we were all disappointed let's be real um it was a sad day <laughs> i felt so bad for him it's an early lesson oak trick does dude uh, doesn't he always this is what being an adult this is what being an adult is like son dude i felt so bad i was like we should go back and try again but it'll probably be something even worse <laughs> we'll get a goldine uh taxes death and clefairy <laughs> god dang it oh my god my poor four-year-old it's okay he handles things very well he was just really mad and it was i laughed he he eventually laughed I was like, oh, Elon, there's a moment like this on the internet. I'll have to show you it. <laughs> I should show him that. He would he would like it more, probably, if I showed him a funny video about it. Dang, though, you guys. It's a rough lesson to learn. Last night on Killer Queen's stream, um, which I think she's streaming right now, so maybe we'll raid her. Um, Magikarp is true depression. Uh, Clefairy is the housing crash of 08. Oh no. Goldine is the Great Depression of Pokemon. Oh no. Oh, this is sad. I would have taxes over Clefairy. Oh god. I wouldn't. Oh my god. That's terrible. I'm like, what did I keep in this little pocket? It's like moss. <laughs> it's like random moss. <laughs> like, oh yeah, that sounds about right, Carly. I'm surprised there's not a rock in there and a, a leaf that you thought was beautiful that day. Or a seed. Hi, Taco! Oh my god, welcome in! Hello! It's so good to see you. It's really bright, so I have to do this to read chat. Oh my god, all my favorite people are in here now. Feel good feels good um i am chilling outside because it's 66 degrees and sunny and beautiful i don't really need this sweater but i like it so i'm wearing it um 
Yeah, I can't see at all with these sunglasses off. But hi. My, I found out. Oh, UPS delivered a package? Oh, sheesh. Hi, UPS. Thank you. If I yell thank you loud enough, you can probably hear me. Because you're just around the other side of the house. A roast bloke. Welcome in. Magic Carp can literally jump over mountains in the original Pokedex. What? That's awesome. Yeah, Magikarp is badass. Once you evolve, it doesn't matter what you started as, man. That's just like life. It doesn't matter where you started. What are you evolving into? So, today, speaking of evolving, it's a great segue. <laughs> great segue. Thank you, self. Thank you, friends, in chat. Um, I got this awesome book uh, by my Qigong instructor, Lee Holden. So we're going to read his origin story, alright? And yeah. I use origin story casually in everyday life because we are all our own archetypes if you really think about it. So I'm going to take this off because I can't really read with them on. And the sun's uh, about to go down behind that tree so it's about to be better in like 15-ish minutes. What time is it? Sunset? I thought so. See why I like Magikarp? Yeah. Yeah, they, if only they would come back here and deliver packages, that'd be the best. They could just put them on the back porch. That'd be awesome. I should ask. Anyway. You ready for this? You ready for this origin story? I love origin stories, dude. That's like my favorite, my favorite kind of superhero movie ever. Um, my uh, upstairs neighbor and I have a really good best friend origin story. I kind of want to tell you first, actually, because this is- I could read forever. I love reading. Okay. Best friend origin story from, um, shoot, was it just last night? Was it Halloween? No, it was the night before Halloween. Um, so it was the 30th, so two nights ago. Um, we were- <laughs> she came over randomly, and we were just chatting, and I, like, had her come inside and we were just hanging out and um, I brought up, I told her, she asked what I was doing that night and I was like, oh, I'm going to this show. I was like, it's a band out of like Kalamazoo Grand Rapids um, called The Last Gasp Collective. Absolutely amazing group. Amazing R&B group. Super talented musicians. Just freaking unbelievable singers. Like just incredible a cello player and oh my god just unbelievable anyway so last gasp collective so I tell her that I'm gonna go see them and I pronounce it all slow like that because nobody ever knows who they are and she goes oh my god I love them you actually know who they are and I'm like I'm about to fall down like you know who they are because they're kind of like underground and I'm like we need to share them like their music is phenomenal and so she's like I was like it might be their last show tonight like I don't know if they're gonna they said that this might be their last show they don't have any more planned and she was like we have to go like I'll split gas with you like let's go we're gonna drive like an hour to go see this show I was like all right let's do it so we get in my car and my key fob doesn't want to start my car it's like not recognizing that there's a key in there I'm like dang I'm like I think I just need a new battery in this thing like it's probably about time for me to replace the battery. I thought I just replaced it, but, um, and she's like, oh, I probably have the battery upstairs. Like, let's open it and see. So she opens it, but we're still inside my car. And my car has, like, all these little nooks and crannies that things could fall, and we can't, like, lift the seat up. At, you can only, like, move the seat back and forth. And so I never have opened the key in there because I don't want to lose it. And so we she just opens it in there without either of us thinking about it and the key just explodes everywhere all the different pieces the microchip the like little like rubber part that presses the buttons with the little metal on one side like uh, the buttons on the actual key fob itself all these little like little plastic pieces that are like but smaller than lego pieces it was crazy the whole thing just exploded and we're just looking at each other like oh god oh god what did we get ourselves into right now so we're looking everywhere for this key we find all the parts except for the most important part the key like the microchip for the key 
that like helps it recognize that it's my car and all this stuff. And I'm like, where would it have gone? Like, we looked everywhere. We cleared out the whole car. I picked up trash in my car. Like, everything I could think of. Like, looked in the side pockets. Like, cleaned out everything. Couldn't find it anywhere. So, it was like, alright, we're gonna miss the show. You know, let's just go hang out inside and eat and chill. And that's what we did. We just sat around, had a good conversation, and chilled, and got to know each other, and she's so cool i was like oh my god this sucks <laughs> that we don't get to go to the show and it's the final show and she's like it's okay like this has been a really good night and i'm so sorry about your key i thought i was gonna have to take a lift the next day because i was like i don't have my car like essentially my car doesn't work like you know i was just like i don't know man like life happens so we're just i'm just laying in bed after that just chatting um, chatting with Taco actually and I was like oh like I got a I got a random text from her that just says it's all capitals of course and it just says OMG I found it and this is like two hours later I'm like we checked her backpack her coat everything like we looked every single crevice of this car I swear both of us flashlights everything extreme she was like, I put my hand in some really sketchy places in your car. <laughs> I was like, Judy, you really did. That was very brave of you. <laughs> she was so funny. Like, we just got along really well. Instantly. And it would have been freaking awesome to go to the show with her. But lo and behold, it didn't happen. But we did have a good night hanging out. So, end of the story. Climax of the story, as you could say. Um, I'm like, she comes down, she knocks on my door, she gives me, I'm like, where did you find it? Like, you have to tell me what happened after all of this looking and it's been hours, like, this is like four and a half hours later at this point. <laughs> I'm sorry. She's like, she's like, it was in my boobs, it was in my cleavage the whole time. <laughs> Like, I, oh my god, I was like, you've got to be joking. I was like, that's literally the funniest ending to the story ever. I, like, fell down in my kitchen laughing. I thought it was so funny when she told me that. Oh my god, I was like, no freaking way. Yep, that was that, that was the punchline to that story. I was like, god, that was a good one. Like, I, some other things that have happened in my life have been really funny, but, like, that was one of the funniest. It was safe. Safe and sound. And I was like, it has to be close to the car. <laughs> this is so funny. Because otherwise the door wouldn't open. And she was just like, oh my god. Shoot. I wish I would have realized it, like, when she walked away. Like, me try to open the door again and have it not work. I've been like, it's on you somewhere. <laughs> you have to go strip down and then we can go to the show. <laughs> She'd be like, what? <laughs> like, I know this is a weird way to get to know someone, but I have a funny feeling about this. Oh my god, it just cracks me up, dude. I can't believe it. So there, the sun is going down. It was safe and sound. Sketchy places in your car. Yeah, like, underneath the, like where the car moves on the little rail, you know? She like looked underneath there with just her, she just poked her fingers under there. I was like, oh, that's risky, dude. <laughs> I don't know, I found some cheese puffs. I don't know how long these cheese puffs have been here. But I remember Elon saying he didn't want them and then, yes, then there were cheese puffs everywhere. Great way to get to know someone. We, it, we had a great time just chatting, it was so fun. So anyway, I'm gonna eat a little bit. I don't know how hungry I am. Talking to you guys just is so fulfilling. It's like eating a full meal. So I'm gonna read some of this book to you. So it's called Seven Minutes of Magic. Great title, gotta say. Recharge your body each day with Qigong. And Deepak Chopra has the quote on the front. A perfect blend of Western and Eastern fitness to jumpstart your day and help you relax at night. So I'm gonna read, like I said, his origin story. We'll, uh, we'll eat more euro later, it's fine, I can wait. I've eaten plenty. Modern life leaves us always on the run. Juggling the pressures of work and money, family and friends, often leaves us little time to take care of our health and well-being. 
I've developed 7 Minutes of Magic as a mind-body wellness program to dramatically improve your life in an amount of time that you can find even in your most hectic day. Just how long is 7 minutes? Putting it into perspective, most of us spend 7 to 8 hours sleeping, 2 to 3 hours making and eating meals, 3 to 4 hours watching television, and 8 or more hours working. Is committing to a brief 7 minute routine worth the effort if it means more energy and less stress in your daily life? Is it really that hard to find a 7 minute block of time to rejuvenate, recharge, and reinvigorate your mind and body? These are good questions. Look at it this way. There are 7 minutes of commercials in a half hour television program. If you have to, you can do your 7 minutes of magic. There's probably more now. This was written a few years back. You can do your 7 minutes of magic 2 or 3 minutes at a time during the commercials. It's not ideal, but it will still work. This book is about taking away the excuses, so you can be healthy and full of energy. In order to live a balanced life, you need two distinct kinds of energy. One to fire you up in the morning, and the other to calm you down in the evening. As you will discover for yourself, the 7 minute morning routine is faster than waiting in line for a Starbucks, and will give you more energy and vitality throughout your day than a double latte, without the caffeine crash. In addition, you will find that the 7 minute evening routine is more relaxing than sipping a cocktail and will help you unwind and clear your stress from the day, without the hangover. Life today demands seemingly endless amounts of energy, and all too often we're left feeling drained and exhausted. Everyone needs more energy, but most people have forgotten how to access it. This program will show you how to awaken the energy in your body and harness the energy that exists in the world all around you. Oh shoot, party. Dude, you can, right? Definitely, so Michigan. Man, it needs a paint job. <laughs> Dude, if you guys are not following Artie Ziff, please get over there. Neo, if you're still in the chat, um, you, thank you. Got you. You're the best. Thank you. Honestly, Artie is one of my all-time favorite content creators on all platforms, whether you follow him on YouTube or watching him on, I think, TikTok, but I'm terrible at TikTok, honestly. Um, Instagram is where I follow you mostly, and, uh, and Twitch. Badass Twitch streamer. Follow him for wrestling. Follow him for um, the ZNWA he does his own wrestling show. It is absolutely phenomenal. I can't even watch regular wrestling anymore. It's just not the same. You're like, these guys are like, I don't know. You guys are out of this world. You and Sokka? Oh my god. <laughs> Friggin' awesome. All houses probably need a paint job, yeah. Unless you get some nice siding and then they just need a power wash. Shoot, I was just wondering, since the sun is going down, if I should just go inside. So that was kind of a good interruption. <laughs> Cause, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm like, alright, I'm cold. <laughs> I'm cold, time to go inside. Shoot, and now I lost my bookmark. <laughs> the crying face. Dude, Artie has some fire emotes. Fire emotes, fire content. Get over there. You guys, what are you doing wasting your time watching me? No, I'll be right back. Dude, well, look, I even brought my yoga mat outside. I was like, maybe we can do qigong out here. But I forget that it's Michigan. And the sun sets at like 6 o'clock here now. I feel like one hour of sun sunshine after work. Just us in a lonely chair. Chair to stream. This is a different kind of chair stream. It's not the chair you guys are used to. I'm just 
my color. All right, friends. I know, isn't it? It's so nice out there, though. It's real beautiful. Oh, there's my neighbor's car. But I'm looking at it. the porch is still. Let's see if you can see the gnomes. Oh yeah, you can see the just the tops of their heads. I think we'll go all the way inside though so that I can get back on Wi-Fi. I'm not trying to use all my phone data streaming. It's just being real. <laughs> So, this was weird. A couple of the trick-or-treaters last night tried to steal my pumpkins. Like, right in front of me. I was like, y'all, I just gave you candy. <laughs> put those down. Their dad was like, put those back. I was like, what's wrong with your kids? I was like, why would they do that? Why did they think they could get away with that when I'm right here? Like, teach them to be sneaky. <laughs> what's wrong with them? If you're gonna steal something, like, steal it right, man. Oh my god.